This is an excerpt taken from a lecture unit developed by Professor Mike Ashby of the University of Cambridge. The lecture unit is designed to give educators ideas about how they can introduce the concepts of sustainability, product life cycle and rational selection to introductory level undergraduate students. There are currently 22 other lecture units and over 200 resources of various formats in Granter's teaching resource website. This 10 minute section covers one case study showing how students can very quickly play with different scenarios to check the environmental impact of design decisions. It uses the Eco Audit tool, which is part of CES EduPack. We are assuming that you are already familiar with the life cycle of a product, life cycle analysis in general, and the need to protect the environment for future generations. CES EduPack is a supporting resource for materials related courses across design, engineering and science. It is primarily aimed at undergraduate courses, but is also used in some high schools and on some specialist graduate courses. It is used at more than 800 universities and colleges worldwide. One of its tools is the Eco Audit tool. This tool was developed both to be used in design, where typically over 70% of a product's environmental impact becomes fixed, and to help introduce students to concepts around sustainability. It has to be quick and easy to use, and while its results are approximate, we need to retain sufficient discrimination to differentiate between alternative choices. This is not a tool to calculate a full LCA, and just concentrates on energy consumption and carbon dioxide emissions. The life phases are separated out so that the dominant phase can be seen and acted on first. Professor Ashby will now present a case study. Thank you, Hannah. Greetings from Cambridge. This is Mike Ashby, and I'm here to describe a little eco-audit case study to show you how the eco-audit tool works. And here it is. It concerns a one-litre PET bottle with a polypropylene cap. The bottle is blow molded The cap, too, is molded. The bottle is filled in France and transported 550 kilometres to the UK. That's the transport phase. And the use phase, the bottle is refrigerated for two days. That consumes energy, and then it's drunk. We'd like to know what the life cycle energy and life cycle carbon emissions for this little scenario look like. Here is the input table for the audit tool. The first line describes the bottle itself. We'll do the analysis for 100 bottles. The material is PET, reading across. The process is molding. The mass per bottle is 40 grams. And at end of life, we'll presume that the bottle's recycled. The second line shows the input for the 100 caps. Polypropylene molded. Each cap weighs one gram. They too will be recycled. The last line describes the water, and that has to be included in order to be able to calculate the energy of transport from France to the UK. So we have 100 litres, each litre weighing a kilogram, 100 litres of water, and they then are uh, added into the rest. The next line of the input is the transport itself, 14 tonne truck, 550 kilometres. And the final entry is the use phase, the refrigeration. The refrigeration uses electricity. We have to include the inefficiency, the losses associated with converting fossil fuel to electric power. That's the first box. The second box is the quantity of electric power that's required. The last two boxes are the number of days and hours per day for which the refrigeration is carried out. And that's the lot. If we now press the report button, the system delivers a report of which this is part. The upper picture shows the energy across life. The lower picture shows the carbon emission. The columns, reading from left to right, are for material, manufacture, transport, use, and the potential credit at end of life if the bottle is recycled. The audit reveals the most energy and carbon intensive steps. And here, it's quite clearly the material itself that accounts for over half of the total energy and the, the largest contribution to the total carbon emissions. And having identified that, the tool then allows you to try various alternative what-if scenarios. And here is one. Supposing we replace the PET bottle, which is quite energy intensive, by one made of glass. There are glass one litre bottles on the market, so we can assess what the mass of a glass bottle is, and we can enter that information in the tool, simply by overwriting what we had before. So the first line is overwritten 
with soda glass, molded, a single bottle weighing 450 grams. And the second line is overwritten for the aluminium caps on the bottle, made by rolling each cap weighing 2 grams. The rest of the inputs remain the same. And this is what the output then looks like. On the left there is the original audit we had a minute ago. The effect of changing to the glass bottle is this. There's a change of scale. The uh, scale has been doubled. That means that the first column, the material column, which appears to be the same height as the one on the left, is actually twice as large because of the change of scale. The material energy and the manufacturing energy have both increased substantially by a factor of two or more. The same is true of the carbon emissions. And that's simply because the glass bottle is so heavy. It weighs 10 times as much as the PET bottle. And the consequence of that is simply the amount of energy that is embodied in the glass and in the manufacturing process. So changing to a glass bottle wasn't a good idea. Let's try something else. Supposing instead of using virgin PET, we replaced it with recycled PET. That's straightforward in the tool. You just choose recycled PET when entering the material. And the result now looks like this. There's a dramatic fall in the energy associated with the material by a factor of about two. And there's a corresponding fall in the carbon emissions associated with the bottle. So this does look like a good idea. The question, of course, is whether recycled PET is available. If we go back to the record for PET and scroll down to material recycling here and look under that, we find an entry for recycle fraction in current supply. And what it tells us is that about 20%, about a fifth of all the PET that is currently used, is recycled PET. So it does appear to be practical to use recycled PET. Mm -hmm. If we go back to the audit, uh, we could try a couple of other scenarios. One is that of combusting the bottle for energy recovery instead of recycling it, burning it and capturing the heat. This is what happens. It's possible to capture some energy from that process. It's shown here, but it's not very much. There is nonetheless some en energy recovery, but the other consequence is a more serious one, and that is that all the hydrocarbon that was stored in the bottle, in the PET of the bottle, is now released as carbon dioxide, and there is therefore a very large carbon release associated with the combustion process. So that doesn't sound like such a good idea. Here's one final scenario, not a very sensible one. Supposing instead of shipping the bottles by truck, they were air freighted to the UK from France, and instead of refrigerating for two days, we had a long weekend and they were refrigerated for 10 days. This is the consequence. The transport phase goes up enormously. The energy associated with air freight is much larger than that associated with truck transport. There's a change of scale here again. And similarly, refrigerating for 10 days multiplies the use energy by a factor of 5 from 2 days to 10 days. So it jumps up. There's a, 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 a similar increase in the carbon for transport and the carbon for use. And the consequence is that the dominant phase of life now is not the material, as it was at the beginning. It's now transport and use. And the obvious thing to do is to revert to a mode of transport which is much less energy intensive. Well, that was an introduction based on an extremely simple case study. The tool contains audits that are built in for a number of other products rather more elaborate audits, and these allow the student or the instructor to work through rather more realistic what-if scenarios like this one. Well, thank you. At this point, I will hand you back to Hannah. Here we summarise the teaching outcomes enabled by the use of the EcoAudit tool. The tool comes with a set of preloaded EcoAudits in which the bill of materials, the process choice, the transport mode and distance, and the duty cycle are already entered. Beyond this, the students can carry out their own investigation of a product by dismantling it and setting up an eco-audit project for themselves. This video is an excerpt from one of 23 lecture units available on the Teaching Resource website. Unit 12 has been made open access under a Creative Commons license. You can go to the web address on the screen and download it. There are resources both on eco-design and the eco-audit tool, and also on low-carbon power systems. They include white papers, exercises with work solutions, 
and other lecture units.